Today I'm going to be making a Xenomorph! First I'm taking this helmet dome template from my original Kylo Ren helmet which was slightly too big and traced it onto an EVA foam floor tile. That little extra bit of cardboard in the middle is from a much more friendly little biomechanoid. For those of you who are new to my channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, just cover a bike helmet with foil, then duct tape, then cut out a pattern, and then flatten it to get a shape that you can trace from. That way you can translate any curved surface onto foam. But before I get to the curve, I stopped, removed the template, and continued straight. That's because the alien dome is much more elongated than a human helmet dome. Those little hash marks there to help me line it up later. They're called registration marks. My motivation for doing this, is, aside from, you know, I just love the alien movies, is that I've seen so many full body alien costumes where it's clear that the builder spent countless hours carving the head out of styrofoam to get it perfect, then they got it perfect, and then they spray painted it and watched their work dissolve before their very eyes. Because most spray paint dissolves styrofoam. So this video is meant to be a highly specific PSA specifically for alien costume builders. Once I cut out that banana peel shape, I flipped it and copied it to another sheet of foam. After I cut that out, I began heat forming both of those by heating them up with a heat gun and curving the edges with my fingers. For those who have never worked with EVA foam and are about to ask if they can use a hair dryer, the answer is only if it can get hot enough to turn your flesh into bacon. I still have a scar from that, by the way. To try and get them to hold that curved surface, I put spent tape rolls over them and placed them in a bucket to cool. I connected the seams with contact cement, and that's how you make a fender. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe. Kidding. <laughs> You got a ways to go. You'll notice that there's a defect on the end there, and that's because I didn't center the template properly onto the foam. So I accounted for that by adding a foam spacer in between the two fenders. Also felt like it needed a bit more length. Normally I would save filling in the seams for last, well, second to last before painting, but I found that it takes multiple layers of quick seal to really get a seam to disappear. And it takes up to 24 hours for quick seal to dry, so I went ahead and started on the most appalling seams and worked on them each time I reached a stopping point on this Build. Essentially, I was working on this in little half hour bursts while waiting for paint and glue to dry and other projects. So I'm just doing this to illustrate how it's just barely too wide. And yeah, you can bend it, but it's gonna look kind of like a banana. So close. I used my DRD side hull panel template as a jumping off point to figure out the shape of the side of the alien's dome. So I made a template, flipped it, made one for the other side. I've got it sort of pivoted up slightly to make a dip right here because front of the alien's head is supposed to be bulbous. I repeated the same heat forming process from the top of the dome as well as the cementing process in order to make and attach the side panels. So right about now alien purists might be mashing their keyboards. The dome is transparent and in the first movie yeah but the design of the alien changes depending on what movie you're watching so feel free to make alterations as you see fit. I'm gonna be making the alien with an opaque dome because I'm on a budget and it's what looks right to me. I mean, I grew up on Alien Resurrection and I know a lot of people have issues with that film, but I liked it. So I guess this is an Alien Resurrection alien and I'm okay with that. Now I can't just use this same template on the back. I would have like a bulbous section just like on the front. Two, it's too long. So I have to uh, make a new one. The seams come out better if the edges of your foam pieces are smooth. So I sanded the edges that got ripped up by my dulling knife blade using the belt sander, which was purchased for $80 using past Patreon money. Thanks, patrons! Seriously, I use it on like every build. Although the belts do frequently wear out and need to be replaced. So thank you current patrons for your ongoing support. In fact, this is a good place as any to thank my patrons. Got a lot of footage I need to talk over. If I time lapse it too much, then you can't tell what's going on. Those names scrolling by are my patrons. In particular, I'd like to thank Dexter, Andrew, and Kendrick, who collectively donated $350 this month. That's amazing! You made this video possible. Like, I'd be working on this in my spare time regardless, but there's no telling when it'd be done. Without you, it would have taken at least a year to build the alien and two months to edit. So you guys just cut six months off the project and made it more elaborate than it would have been. Like, see, like listen, hear how energetic I am right now compared to usual? Because I actually plan this sound setup a lot more than I usually do. And I had time to do that. And it will become more apparent how crucial your support was as the video progresses. Oh, hey, you should be wearing gloves while applying quick seal with your hands like this. For the back of the alien's head, I built a foam dome from one of my old helmet templates. Actually, this is from the Kylo... 
Kylo Ren? No, Knights of Ren helmet template, which is slightly smaller than the Kylo Ren helmet. And then I trim the edge to fit. That actually is an interesting looking helmet dome. Should figure out something to do with that. But the end of that is done. I modeled the structures on the back after a woman's legs because it just seemed like the HR Giger-ish thing to do. Oh man, I probably shouldn't tell her that I did that. Used her legs to create a horrific monster costume. I don't think she'd be too thrilled with that. Oh wait, she's definitely subscribed. Oh boy. What are you doing, Jake? William Shakespeare, make the mistakes so you don't have to. This type of EVA foam is lighter and more flexible. I bought it off a vendor from Toronto Prop Expo. That came out of my YouTube projects fund bank account. So once again, thank you, patrons. I say patrons, patrons. Ah, not, nah, don't get that, that's the worst consonant for sound recording. The reason I'm using it here is to cut down on the weight of the costume and decrease the possibility of backspouts breaking if I bump into someone, which absolutely will happen at a convention. I cut them out and heat form them. I let them cool inside a poster mailing tube. This prevents indents on the foam from those spent tape roll edges that I used before. I glued them together. Make sure you're wearing a respirator mask while you're doing this. You shouldn't be able to smell the contact cement. Oh, see that? That's not dry yet. But it is very alien-esque. And make sure all all the registration marks match up. I work on these additional costume pieces while waiting for quick seal to dry on the dome, a process which I attempted to speed up in various ways. So there's supposed to be a cutout oval, I think around here, and there's a lot of extra space here because I gotta chop it off so that it fits on the, on the back properly. Hey, I just got a text and I'm not using contact cement. It's a miracle. I covered those seams with quick seal and it'll be about another 24 hours <laughs> before I can work on them again. So once again, back to the dome. I sanded the seams on the dome with both the belts sander and the rotary tool, depending on which was more convenient. It's just a really awkwardly shaped thing to try and sand. I also rounded all the, well, most of the edges. It's a biomechanoid, there have to be some angles. Then I began to build the internal structure that would allow it to sit comfortably, quotation marks, over my head. I started coating the dome with latex house paint, knowing that it would need multiple layers. And I'm so thrilled with the outcome. In fact, I, I think I'm gonna use latex house paint from now on as a base. Yeah, so those uh, 300 other tutorials I say use Plastidip? Yeah, forget that. Never mind. I sense a disturbance as if a million makers cried out in rage and were suddenly silenced because they weren't wearing a mask while painting. You'll notice that it's only shiny where the, the putty was. It's because it's acting like a barrier between the foam and the paint so you get a more shiny surface. You need to do at least two layers so that it's shiny all over as opposed to just along the seams. Okay, so this is with the second coat and you can see it's a little bit better. Like right here, it's really smooth. This is almost perfect, but you can t still tell the um, texture difference. So this means I'm gonna need to do at least one more layer. However, you can also see that where I laid on the paint real thick, there are some drips that have solidified uh, on the dome, which is not a huge problem in terms of the alien because it's almost always seen in very low light and it's usually dripping with slime. So I mean that that works, but it's something that I would like to try to avoid. So rather than filming the same thing over and over again, I'm gonna work on the jaw. And when we come back to this, it'll be magically done. I sort of eyeballed and cut out the lower jaw. Actually, I think I used templates from the commando droid for this, at least for the, the bottom of the lower jaw. For the hands and feet, I'm using just regular old Halloween store werewolf hands and feet and paint them black using black acrylic. Actually, I probably could have used latex house paint on that too. Now I'm gonna rebuild these eventually. Then I built a neck and shoulders using this template taken from my neck and shoulders, which was so comfortable. It's using foil back then. I traced that onto craft foam, which you can get at any craft store for like a buck a sheet. I cut all those out. I heat formed and glued those together the same way I've done throughout this video. And oh, hey, accidental Batman gorgeous. Swear to me. Got lined up to where the head should be because this whole thing right now just wants to fall apart. Uh, I've stabbed some barbecue skewers through the eyes. <laughs> oh God. I closed up the headspace with foam panels and held them in place temporarily with barbecue skewers until the glue dries. That's just terrifying. I made and attached the jaw plus gums, which is essentially just backing for me to attach the teeth to. I made the teeth out of scrap EVA foam off cuts for the long ones and puzzle pieces for the short ones. Never throw out puzzle pieces. I carved them with a box cutter and then refined them with a rotary tool. I applied contact cement to the gums and then to the teeth. I also put that little rectangular support structure just below the front of the hood there to help hold on the tubes. More on that later. Hey, just, just, just watch the video, you'll see, it'll all make sense. And a little buck tooth alien. That's hilarious. Ah, like a vampire. Yeah, this is way too much. It's like a walrus. It's still not really working. And I think 
Uh, part of the issue is the top jaw is like this perfect U shape and the bottom jaw is a slender jaw shape. So I gotta move the bottom jaw forward. See how much better that looks? I just cut that and folded it in. So now this is narrower than the hood and I think that'll work. The two new teeth, uh, cause I missed a few. Slide the glue upside down on this cause it's much easier. And that's the palette over there. So we've got the palette and the missing tooth applied. That looks so much better. I mean, it's not perfect. I think that this tooth needs a bit more refinement. That's gotta be replaced cause there's some hot glue stuck on there from some long forgotten project. And God, I can almost paint this as just, well, no, I gotta get the gums in there first. I put some putty in there, by the way, just, you know, to make that a bit more seamless. Ha 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 ha, kill me now. But I just checked and they're supposed to be shorter and then progressively get larger. Okay, so now that the teeth are fixed, I'm gonna add drawstrings, which will need tunnels to go through, otherwise they'll dig into the foam. So I made those out of a wide body pen. After those were installed, I built gums out of hot glue, only because I did not yet know about Foam clay. I've got the gums uh, finished, and now I want to hit that with the heat gun. I did a final heat pass before painting, just to attempt to make the foam a little less porous. You know, I wasn't sure about that. I knew it'd be better than no gums, but I I'm really liking that so far. So yeah, I'm thinking at least two more coats of paint, and that'll be done. I love how the gums came out. That worked so perfect. Then I moved on to the details on the side of the head. Some of them are actually femurs. So I got about 15 bucks worth from Five Below. Thank you, patrons. Oh, so this was around Halloween. That's when I shot this. Also pipe insulation. I had this great plan to have a strobe light going. Just hang out in the bushes outside the door to scare everybody. Yeah, nothing's gonna go wrong there. The difficult part is making it look like the details are inset while also leaving enough space inside the costume for your actor's head. Hence all the notches that I'm cutting out. Before I built the lips, I needed to paint the teeth. The version of the alien that I'm trying to recreate had metal teeth, so I'm painting these chrome. Using Molotow chrome in a film can. Remember film? I remember. The alien queen's teeth were um, transparent. And I don't think the alien drones have transparent teeth. As best I can tell, they're actually metallic. To puppeteer the lips, I made drawstrings out of fishing line and safety pins. The lips themselves, I made out of nylon spandex it was like a 70-30 percentages type fabric. Once they were cut out, I glued a thick wire from a dead laptop charger inside to bulk up the lips. I attached them to the face and secured the pins behind the lips. There are a lot of shots of the alien flaring its lips. I ran out of flex tubing, so I had to buy more. Thank you, patrons! So this feeds into those side larger hoses. The aliens have these crisscrossing muscles for cheeks, so I made those out of more strips of nylon and secured them with a combination of glue and brads. Brads are small decorative nails. This is the bottom lip and just pin that in the bottom right there. Next I'm making the shoulder arches out of EVA foam floor tiles, pipe insulation, and thin craft foam strips. There won't be any wear or tear on the thin foam, so I used hot glue here, but there will easily be a, a lot of wear and tear on the blades themselves, so I attach those to the shoulders with contact cement. And now we are painting them. Next I sanded the back spouts, which have had more than enough time to dry by this point. These things. I like the ones in Batman versus Alien. Mostly they're depicted, <laughs> mostly they're depicted as uh, being the length of a limb. I repeated that process for the other side, then I cut holes for the spouts to go over the shoulder tubes and in the sides to show the details. I glued them in. God, there's gotta be more to say there. One of the reasons why I'm doing this as opposed to just tubes, so I saw somebody make an amazing alien costume head and it was just an amazing costume, but the tubes in the back were pool noodles. So yeah, you know, just put a little bit of effort into it. To help hold those onto the suit, I used more barbecue skewers, but since these ones are staying in, I have to make sure that they won't contact actual human flesh. Now I gotta glue that on, but I would like to do them both at the same time. Otherwise it's gonna take twice as long. There we go. Okay, yeah, let's glue it up. Glue it up. So it's sort of flayed like that because the contact cement cannot contact itself while it's getting ready to be contacted. Yeah, that makes perfect English. When those were finally secured, I painted them black. I realized that I neglected the details under the hood, so I made those out of all kinds of flex tubing before moving on to the side of the neck. Skyler Osler of Cosplay Apprentice generously donated two buckets of his FOMO foam clay, so that's what I'm using to hide the 
seams and fill in the blank spaces slash rough edges. Thanks, Cosplay Apprentice. This stuff is my new favorite thing ever. It's just as malleable as clay, but without all the mess, like a kneadable eraser. I wonder if they're chemically the same. They kind of act the same a little bit. And all of these details were applied insanely quickly in comparison to the hot glue and tube method. The only drawback is that it takes two full days to dry completely. But the difference is I'd be spending two days applying details a different method, whereas now is like what? An hour applying details and then 47 hours that I can spend editing. Well, you gotta get a few hours of sleep in there somewhere. I scored those veins with a razor pen, then painted them. For the mini mouth, I made castings of my teeth using alginate, and then when they were done, resin from Amazon. Thank you, patrons. Is that getting old yet? Too bad. I'm going to thank all the patrons. Forever and ever. A hundred years, all the patrons and casting trays from my dentist. Thank you, dentist. I'm not sure he wants his name on the internet. Dentists are great for funding independent films. Just ask Sam Raimi. Here's the thing about alginate though. It shrinks ever so slowly. Epoxy resin takes 24, at least 24 hours to solidify. So I don't know how accurate these are to, to me because they were in a mold that was shrinking while they were still malleable. Then I took the spring load mechanism from my Mayfield costume. I built them into the esophagus using wider flex tubing. And loaded it into the mouth to be operated on a closed set only. If you're at a convention and someone leans in close for a picture, then you deploy the mechanism just as their buddy that you couldn't see from inside your costume pushes them to give them a scare. They'll get in the way, this will kill them, you go to jail. So, you know, be smart about this. Like, I would just not make it spring-loaded for conventions. I'm gonna have to replace this before I take it out in public. The rest of this costume will be accomplished with a black morph suit and werewolf appendages. I can only get away with this by filming the full shots in low light. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, then you can subscribe for similar content. This video was only possible because of a generous donation from my patrons. And I know it's hard to tell from the outside looking in where all the money goes. So I've had a counter going throughout the build. As amazing as all the donations were, they were not enough to do the chest, legs, and tail of the creature. In fact, if you factor in man hours at minimum wage, I probably, yep, no, nope, didn't make a profit off of this. And I'm assuming that the massive donation from a few select patrons, these guys, was a one-time thing. So if you all want to see the rest of the Xenomorph, or hey, the helmet that I've been trying to get done for years now, or just videos of this caliber, then you can follow the link to my Patreon page below, where patrons get the videos ad-free and early, not to mention behind-the-scenes content, and a greater say in the tutorials that I do. Also, come on, these guys were able to give hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Somebody take some of that weight off of them. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. This, this is like a fulfillment of a lifelong dream for me, so can't thank you guys enough. Hey, let me know what your favorite version of the alien is in comments down below. Happy crafting! Wait, is that someone else's slogan? I don't know. See you later.